It's no secret that the human race has done many terrible things throughout history. Even today, we are, and have always been, our own worst enemy. The cruelty of our actions can sometimes have a hidden agenda, a greater motive we're willing to put before the lives of others. And during the 20th century, that hidden agenda was science. For almost a century, hundreds of experiments were conducted using humans as test subjects, both with and without their knowledge, and it was all done in the name of science. Welcome back to the Creepy Archives, a series where we're diving into some of the most disturbing events, media, and places that will leave you feeling uneasy. If you enjoy creepy content, please hit subscribe. In this video, we're taking a look at some of the most cruel and creepy experiments ever performed on real people. During the 1930s, in the midst of a potential biological war panic, as well as a tense situation regarding the war in China, Japan created the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department as a program meant to focus on public health and safety. However, there were several secret units within the department that were working on other types of research. The facility was located in Manchukuo, a region in China controlled by the Japanese until 1945, and during its time of operation, it was known as Unit 731. Its 300 researchers, doctors, and bacteriologists produced several biological weapons, stored all sorts of potentially dangerous diseases and poisons, and, most importantly, conducted tests on human beings. The test subjects were groups of war criminals, political prisoners, homeless, and mentally disabled people of all ages and genders. The official story given to local authorities claimed the site was a lumber mill, so the staff began to refer to the human test subjects as logs. Unit 731 would conduct all sorts of experiments, but the most common one was vivisection, or surgery performed while the subject is alive. The subjects were opened up on surgical tables in all sorts of unnecessary surgeries, and the only purpose was studying their bodies and organs' reactions to the diseases they were injected. But it didn't stop there. Doctors would amputate limbs and observe the blood loss, or they'd reattach limbs in different places, remove parts of vital organs, and even experiment by attaching internal organs to each other. Witnesses confirmed some of these surgeries were performed on pregnant women as well. The procedures were often performed with no anesthesia, meaning the person was fully aware of what was going on, and in most cases, the subjects were dead within minutes. Unit 731 also tested several weapons using human targets. Grenades, flamethrowers, and chemical bombs would be set off against prisoners to study the different ways they were dying from them. In many occasions, the victims would be tied in place to prevent them from running away. Other forms of torture were also tested using prisoners to determine how long it took before they lost consciousness or died. They would leave them out in the cold to freeze and then pour hot water on them. They would have them electrocuted, starved, or even crushed by heavy objects. The list goes on and on. The life of the prisoners meant nothing to researchers. They just thought of them as objects. When the research facility was taken by the Soviet Union's Red Army in 1945, the Japanese government gave the order to destroy all incriminating evidence. Because of this, it's hard to determine exactly how many people died within the hands of Unit 731, but the number is estimated in the thousands. This is an incredibly dark part of history we hope will never be repeated again. For a greater part of the 50s and 60s, the CIA was determined to discover the secrets of mind control. Several top secret programs were approved, which allowed the Secret Service to conduct all sorts of research and experiments that would teach them how to control a person's thoughts and intentions. By now, I'm sure you've heard of MKUltra, the project which conducted all sorts of illegal experiments on humans, using drugs, torture, and other threatening situations to brainwash and control them. However, MKUltra wasn't just one project, but a series of different experiments and operations meant to discover how to control an individual's mind. When the program was cancelled, a large part of the evidence collected over the years was destroyed, but some of the boxes were overlooked and survived the evidence purge. Today we're focusing on one of the experiments found in those boxes, Operation Midnight Climax. The operation started in 1954, in city locations in California and New York. 
The CIA was very interested in the use of narcotics as a way to manipulate subjects. The goal of Operation Midnight Climax was to study the effects of LSD on subjects who had taken it unknowingly and discover if they were more bound to reveal personal information or secrets, as well as find out if they could be manipulated into performing involuntary acts while they were under the influence of the drug. The CIA hired sex workers to lure victims into the safe houses they'd set up in different locations. They decorated them to look like brothels, and installed one-way mirrors in the rooms. Once in the brothel, the victims were secretly drugged and observed as the sex workers asked the questions fed to them by agents. The idea was to discover how vulnerable people became under the influence of LSD, and how far they could push involuntary acts on them. After the first few runs, agents confirmed subjects were very willing to talk after taking drugs, so the operation expanded, and random victims became test subjects all over bars. They also began targeting subjects in suburban areas, since the more remote locations allowed for tougher experiments. Just like with many other MKUltra experiments, Operation Midnight Climax was flooded with illegal activity. The sex workers were being hired with CIA money, or trading favors to drop charges or jail sentences. None of the test subjects knew they were being drugged and watched, and some of them suffered neurological damage after taking some of the drugs. It was also discovered that some CIA agents on the operation were also engaging in drug use and activities with the sex workers themselves. Operation Midnight Climax delivered no real conclusions about mind control, and the highly illegal and unethical experiments, combined with the sloppiness of the agents in charge of the operation, are a huge part of the embarrassment brought upon the CIA when MKUltra was uncovered by the public. A lot of these human experiments are covered up by governments for years, not wanting to deal with the public image of having to acknowledge the terrible acts of the past. However, oftentimes it's thanks to the work of journalists that we discover what really went on in some of these government-funded projects. This is what happened with the plutonium files. Journalist Eileen Wilson uncovered a series of experiments conducted on humans as part of the Manhattan Project, where the goal was to observe the effects of radiation on humans. In most of these experiments, the subjects didn't know they were part of a test that exposed them to radiation. In 1945, the Manhattan Project responsible for the atomic bomb was focusing on understanding what the effects of radiation on humans really were. Not much was known about radiation, other than its great dangers to anything living. So in order to have a more detailed report of the effects, they began conducting a series of experiments on test groups giving them different doses of radiation without their knowledge or consent, and observing the outcome. The tests were conducted all over the United States, and hundreds of people received doses of radiation through different means. In Nashville, for example, a group of pregnant women were given vitamin drinks at checkups, which were actually drinks made with radioactive fluids. In Massachusetts, a group of disabled children were giving oatmeal poisoned with lead in a test sponsored by MIT and the Quaker Oats Company, one of the largest oat distributors in the country. There are many other counts of patients being injected lead and other poisonous elements. In none of these cases the patients were informed of the experiments or consented to them. Researchers were targeting groups of vulnerable population, low-income families, people with disabilities, single moms, in other words, people they thought were less worthy than other members of society. These experiments were mostly secret until Eileen Wilson's investigation was published in 1993. Uh, the report and my eye fell on a footnote, and the footnote mentioned something about 18 humans who had been injected with plutonium, um, but they were known by code numbers only. The program started uh, in the Manhattan Project that was the project to build the atomic bomb in the early 40s. Um, side by side with the physicists worked a group of doctors who were interested in finding out how to protect their own workers in the weapons complex and also trying to figure out what these new radioisotopes did in the human body. Certainly the records indicate that Oppenheimer approved uh, the injections of these patients with plutonium because 
uh, Los Alamos at that time was fighting a severe contamination problem, and the scientists who were working in that in those laboratories were concerned about their own health. It's interesting. As a result of her extremely detailed work, the United States requested federal agencies to make their available records public, including those about human radiation experiments. However, no legal action was ever taken to make justice for the experiments conducted 50 years earlier. What do you think is the cruelest thing the human race has ever done in the name of science? Leave a comment so we can discuss it. Thank you for watching this episode of the Creepy Archives. If you've missed any of the others, be sure to check out the playlist when you can find them all. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next one.